Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. Today, we are going to talk about business detox. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? I have a feeling that a lot of you will really resonate with the conversation. I know that what this means is very powerful in terms of clearing our minds, clearing our hearts, and being able to see better what God has in store for us, what he wants us to be working on, how he wants us to be working, and how he wants us to stay in alignment with his calling, his purpose for us. And where can you step away from the things that don't matter anymore or aren't working anymore? I think you all will probably, if you've been listening to the show for a while, will immediately think of how I have walked away from social media and I focus on growing your business without social media because I feel like everything we see in the secular society is pulling us into directions that it's really hard sometimes to discern. And when we're in that situation, the only hope we have is to step away and really tap into the resources that God is giving us. And that means communicating with him, listening to him. And that is going to be the meat in air quotes of our conversation today. Without further ado, Andrea Anderson, welcome to the Robin Graham show. Thank you. I am so excited to be here with you today. <laughs> We've had a few hiccups with our tech. For some reason, my Zoom is spazzing today and had to restart the computer. So you guys, I think this message is going to be really powerful simply because Satan is like digging in his heels and he doesn't want us to have this conversation. So listen to the end because I have a feeling there are going to be so many golden nuggets that the Holy Spirit's going to deliver through us that it's going to blow your mind. So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, Andrea, will you please tell the listeners a little about you and your journey and what brought you to this point? Mm -hmm. Yes. So one of the things I always like to lead off it with is I was not always a believer um, before I came to faith in my early 20s. I don't have a lightning bolt moment, but it definitely was in my uh, early to mid 20s. I actually was on the atheist agnostic spectrum. And it was the death of my grandfather that God used to get me to start questioning and evaluating if what I was believing about God was true. And I like to say this because people, when they, when they hear me talking about faith, they assume like I had these, this level of understanding all the long, all along and it's not true. <laughs> so just like to say that first, um, where the, where I am today in my business is a hundred percent the Lord. Um, about 17 years ago, he literally spoke life coach to me in a time of prayer when I was asking him, how can I really help people? And this was when coaching, like I had never heard of it. I was like, literally like, what the heck is a life coach? I was like, Lord, if this is a thing, I'm going to Google it. And it was, and I was like, okay, so that was a word from the Lord. And so I got my coach certification, but I, I got it. I was obedient to that, but then I totally freaked out. I mean, at the time I had three kids who were three and under, we have four kids total, but um, anyway, had a lot of doubts, fears, all of that. I'm going to fast track this story. But anyway, um, where I am now in business coaching is because it's honestly just the Lord saying, this is what I have called you to. And it took that long for me to, well, it took about 16 years for me to come to a place of what I would say is stepping into full obedience to that. And as I mentioned, my heart is for transformation. Um, I know it's something that really does make a difference for us, not just for the here and now, but for the right into eternity. And so I love that I be, I, that God is using me to help other Christian entrepreneurs hear him more clearly to have more confidence in that and to more fully walk out in their purpose. Mm, I love it so much. And it, listening to you talk made me think of Romans 12 too, and how we can transform our minds. And there's, there's something so powerful when we step into full belief and we allow God to transform us. And, you know, the brain is so incredibly miraculous. And I see this all the time. And, you know, we have that ability to choose to do the mindset work, to change the neural pathways in our brain. And I have to emphasize that, like you said, it was a 16 year plus journey for you 
to squash the doubt, to squash the fear. So listeners, if you're listening to that and that's resonating with you, I don't want you to give up hope because, I mean, obviously Andrea is proof that this happens, but when we really put our faith in God and we trust that the gifts he's given us and the the choices that he is allowing us to make, if we do listen to him and we do discern, we're able to change how our brain is thinking and functioning. And that is where I think so much power lies because when we do that, we're more open to hearing him and we're more likely to follow what he's guiding us to. So I love that you said that. Andrea, you talk about business detox and I would love to know or I would love for you to tell the listeners, I should say, what exactly does that mean? And how can they start looking at their business in a new way to detox? And I think when we talk about detox, it's, I love the word detox because, you know, you, you, you think of a cleansing and sometimes we really do need to purge. We need to purge our old thoughts. We need to purge our old ways. We need to purge distractions. And sometimes we need to purge clients. Like there's so many ways that we can actually detox. So I would love for you to tell the listeners like what you heard, what, what scripture verses really inspired mm -hmm. you to start this aspect of your business. Yeah. And it's funny you mentioned the, even the word detox and the cleansing, because also part of my background, I was a health coach before I became a business coach. And when I knew the Lord was like, no, you actually need to be a business coach. It's like, okay, what, what do I do in that lane? And I, I was honestly, it was a moment of fear. Cause I'm like, I thought he was going to have me something do completely outside my comfort zone. But so it's just interesting when he gave me the name, the business detox, I'm like, oh, okay. This is still within the realm of what I feel is my wheelhouse. So the verse that he gave me, and even before I, even before I was praying about this program, or even knew that I was going to be stepping into business coaching, the verse he gave me was Hebrews 12, one, which says we are to get rid of everything that hinders to throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us from running that race that Jesus has mapped out for us. And before this moment of clarity that he brought about six months before the program name. Previously, I had lumped the the things that are hindering us and the sin together. And you're like, of course, that makes sense that sin would trip us up. But he was like, no, there are things that are not sinful that are actually tripping you up, which is huge. And I'm sure many of you have heard like the good, bad, or best kind of thing. So the good things in our lives and the better things in our life actually stop us from stepping into the best. And so really what I believe the heart of the business detox is, is whatever those things that literally feel like dead weights that are stopping you or slowing you down from reaching that next level or from fully walking out that business that God has for you, those are the things that are meant to be shed. So sometimes those are things that you were doing in a previous season and you were meant to be doing in a previous season, right? Because God gives it, brings us from strength to strength and glory to glory. So absolutely we take steps, but when we want to go into our next season, sometimes we need to shed those. It's kind of like, um, when you go from having training wheels on your bike, if you're going to ride a two wheeler, you need to shed those training wheels, right? Cause otherwise they're going to hold you back. It could also be those business strategies that you're trying like you know when you're in the business space there are so many different ways that you can grow a business right and there are so many very valid ways but it doesn't mean that what works for one person is going to work for another especially because i really believe god has given us each a unique fingerprint for success just like you have your own fingerprints and your own voice there is going to be a unique way that he has called you to do business and if you are trying to um, emulate someone else's model for success, especially to the T, you're probably going to find there's res there's um, resistance or things that feel like grit in the gears because you're unique. Your story is unique. Your path that God has for you is unique. So, you know, we can learn from others. We absolutely are. But but to try to to cookie cutter things, I, at least in my experience, I found that doesn't often work. 
Oh gosh, I love so much of what you said. I love the unique fingerprint for success. That's so clever. And I love the word unique because we are unique individuals. And when we get distracted, like for example, with social media, when we start looking at what other people are doing, we have to truly discern because what someone else is doing may not be right for us. And I think that's the biggest downfall of social media is the distractions that lead us into comparison and imposter syndrome. And if we have our faith, we know that, you know, God has given us all these unique gifts and we're to use them for his glory, not for our own glory. But social media brings us into that place of, oh, I have to do this so I'm visible here and I look really successful and I look really great and all of these things. And it becomes so much of an inundation on who we truly are and who we're called to be. But I also love that, you know, the word unique and how it, you reminded me as you were talking that when we want to create a personal brand, which is the foundation of our business, we have to differentiate ourselves and looking at everything every quality, every experience, every characteristic that makes us a unique human being, because that's how God created us to be, that differentiates us from everybody else in our niche. So wherever you decide to show up and be visible, it's important that you communicate that differentiation or all of those components that make you unique. Because let's face it, you work with your clients one way. I work with my clients another way. We may have similar soulmate clients or ideal clients, but how we work with them and our journey that has led us to where we are today is so unique that we can help people in unique ways. And we help unique people, right? Like we're not meant to all help the same exact people because our gifts are unique and they're meant to serve the people that are going to resonate most with us and the ones that God wants us to help. A hundred percent. Yeah. And I also see too, like parts of our story, the story that God has given you, right? The, the challenges that you've overcome, the things that come naturally are, that does factor into who we naturally connect with because yeah. I know, and I've seen, right. How your hard circumstances, how he uses those for his glory and to put them if we can take a step back and see those like heart wrenching moments as opportunities to help somebody else, like that also, I think is a connection point with our ideal person as well. Yeah. And I think it's personal as well as business, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we, we have challenges in life and it could be anything from a traumatic experience, a death of a loved one. It could be our faith journey. It could be anything personal as well as from a business perspective and the challenges, the mistakes that we've made and learned from and grown from that somebody else who's just a few steps behind us is now experiencing. A hundred percent. And the other thing that I've noticed for myself as, as God has shown me like how we have to own this, we are meant to own it is he has set each of us apart uniquely in the marketplace. And when we understand that, I believe it does help us to have more of that unshakable confidence that we need if we're going to show up in our business, right? Because we've all ha probably have all experienced in moments whenever we are questioning our value in the, you know, in, as a, as an entrepreneur, as a business, whenever we are doubting ourselves, like that's where we tend to step back and hold back or in a sales conversation where we become, I think, less clear about what is the lane that God is having us step into and who are we really meant for? So I find it just gives this, it's really like a this part of this solid foundation that I believe we need to have to grow healthy businesses because without that, things always feel like they're being shaken mm -hmm. in some way. So Andrea, what is the first step someone can take when they're thinking about their business to start identifying areas they need to detox? Yeah, that's an excellent question. So some of the markers that tell me <laughs> detox is needed is you're using the words, I feel overwhelmed, you know, and especially if that's consistent, if you feel stressed in any way. So bringing like some of my health coaching background, stress is an indicator there is something off. Um, I would say if there is a goal or goals that you have consistently expressed wanting to achieve, 
and you keep feeling like you're hitting a wall on those, that's also an indication there's something there that is stopping you from going forward. So it's a number, it's a number of factors. Mm, I love that. And what do you suggest once someone identifies one of these things, mm -hmm. what do you success, what do you suggest or how do you suggest they approach that? Hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> I feel like that's the work that I do with clients, right? Is listening yeah. for that. Um a hundred percent. I the first place I would look at is are you going to the Lord with business? Are you seeking him? Are you asking him for direction? Here's a big lesson that the Lord taught me is that it's so easy for us as believers to say, I'm trusting God or I'm believing God or yeah, especially like I'm trusting God because we know that's the right answer. We know we are supposed to trust God, but saying you trust it or knowing it in your head doesn't necessarily mean you are actually trusting him. So if we take it back to our businesses specifically, what I saw for myself and see happening with so many entrepreneurs is they're saying they're trusting God with their business, but then when the finances especially are not coming in or where there's confusion, it's almost like this, I'm going to take it back. I'm going to try to figure this out and solve it. Or uh, a, another big indication that I see is a discomfort with carving out time in the beginning of the day with the Lord. It's like, I've got too much on my plate. I just have to jump in. I have to figure this out. So it's looking for what is the language you are using around your business? Is there a lot of I, me, my, or is it Lord? Lord, like, how would you help me approach this? It's not easy. It isn't an easy thing, but he hasn't called us to an easy life. And I've learned that if we aren't going to him, if we aren't asking him for direction, like that's where things start to go awry because we're not listening to the one who knows us best, who knows our past, our present and our future and knows who he has called us to. Mm, I love it so much. And you said a couple of things and listeners, I'm going to link some additional episodes in the show notes because I did one recently on control and how we need to let go of control, but control is, fear. Like when we want to control or we want to be perfect, then we are not trusting. So I think if you are in a place of wanting to control everything or stepping into, it needs to be perfect before I can launch it or any of those thoughts, those are also key indicators. I think that that fear is really guiding you versus putting your trust in God. And then the other thing is, I love how you said, it's not I, me, it's we or Lord. And it's that collaboration that we can have with him. And mm -hmm. there was another episode, again, a Friday faith episode that I did. And I talked about that and, and how scripture absolutely tells us that we're to communicate with God. We're to pray ceasing, cease, without ceasing ceaselessly. <laughs> um, and, you know, that communication and then collaboration with him is so key for, I think, overall growth and development, but also ultimately it's part of the recipe for success. A hundred percent. And I, I like to broaden that definition of success, even to a on the eternal level, right? Because mm -hmm. that is what God cares about most is our, well, first of all, our salvation. <laughs> and secondly, our sanctification, right? Becoming more like him and how we are stewarding what he gives to us and how we are storing up treasure in heaven, because that is something that is going to last, right? Nobody can come in and take that away. And what I tell clients and potential clients is the, the result that matters to me most is that someone would complete with me and they would say, I am closer to the Lord at the end of the day as part of this, because the, the business results, those are things that may, you know, they're not necessarily lasting. And I know that that's how the Lord is defining success. He's like, are you, are you, uh, partnering with me uh, like what's your relationship like me that's what how he would define success it's lasting it's permanent it carries us through those moments of like business suck because that's it's there right 
And yeah, yeah and I think it helps to, to speak to the social media part as well. It's like it, it allows us to cast off those hindrances, really, where we're getting these mixed messages about what the world is saying success should look like. It's like, no, this is what the Lord says about me. So it's standing on those truths, truths in scripture. It's looking at how we are growing in him, how we are going to be more like him as well. Mm, I love that so much. And it really does reframe the definition of success. Yeah. If we don't have him, what does success mean? And I think that's a question we can ask ourselves to make sure that our efforts, our focus are truly in the right place versus going down like secular society and, you know, focusing on, oh, if I get this client, I can go out and buy a new Louis Vuitton or, you know, whatever, whatever success has been demonstrated to be mm -hmm. on social media. And I think that's where it's like the, you know, the bro marketing, Michelle Mazer talks about that all the time. And I just, I think she's so funny, but mm -hmm. it's so true how other people have defined what we're supposed to strive for. And when we take our own identity back, our identity in Christ back, we're able to see that, no, that's not what it's about. I'm here to serve a purpose that God has called me for and live under the pretenses of his guidance, the Holy Spirit's guidance. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let me ask you this. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I just say the scripture that God has brought to mind too, is how, think about the widow that gave her two mites, right? How he commended her above people who were giving, like making, and then giving these, what the, by the world standards would be impressive amounts. He's like, she gave it all. She was highly commended. I mean, and that almost brings me to tears to think like, that is what he's looking at. He's looking at our heart condition and yeah, he, his definition of success <laughs> is literally upside down from how the world defines it. Yeah. And it doesn't mean we're all to be poor, but we're supposed to be good stewards with what he's given us. And our levels of abundance are going to vary. Mm -hmm. Our needs are going to vary, right? Mm -hmm. Where we live, um, you know, how many kids we have, whether we're married or not. Like there's so many factors that determine what our needs are. But at the end of the day, we know that He's going to provide for those needs and that we are not to worry because if we worry about tomorrow, we're losing sight of what the gifts are that we have today. And I think this is where gratitude really comes into play. Yeah. And that's something that I've been focusing I'm in this challenge currently this month. And one of the exercises in it is to not only look at where I may be extending favor to others, and that can be as simple as praying for someone but also looking at where I'm receiving favor. And again, that the definition of that is varied. Sometimes it could just be as simple as a word of encouragement or a smile or something like that. And then it could be the other things that we tend to get woo, like, you know, finances or like miracles happening. But I will tell you in doing this so far, and this goes to gratitude, like the, the favor that I receive every day far outmatches the favor that I can give. It always just shows like God is, abundant. And until I was doing this, it, I didn't realize the extent of favor that God extends to us every day or, and it just has increased that level of gratitude and appreciation for how he is meeting needs on a variety of levels. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it just, it's very, um, it brings a lot of peace as well as joy, which I know as business owners, it's, it allows us to pour from a cup because it's, we're filled, we're filled up with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell me this, when you approach a business detox, how do you look at scripture? Like, how do you find the right scripture verse? I would, I think that I mean, I am in my Bible every morning and it is amazing how many times the verse that I absolutely needed, and there is no exaggeration there. Like it is hands down the exact verbiage I needed to hear that morning. Um, and it's so miraculous when that happens. It's like, okay, I get it. Okay. I feel it. You know, like it's just, it's almost 
like, it's just so moving. Like I feel it in every inch of my body. And I, I hope that everyone gets to experience that, but I know not everybody does. So what do you say to that? Like, how can people start looking to scripture to feel that sense that God hears them? He's talking to them. He's communicating with them through scripture. Yeah. The first place to start is asking and then believing, right? Because God says, if we ask anything according to his will, he will do that. So I can tell you with 100% confidence that if you are asking God to understand him better through his word, he's going to answer that because literally that's what he tells us to do in his word. So you have that confidence. The second thing is if you are like, yeah, 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 Andrea, like I've tried that before. You know, I don't feel anything. Part of it is he might be growing your trust muscle or your belief muscle. He knows those areas that we struggle with and we give to, up too easily on. And I will say, if you struggle with that, if you struggle believing that for yourself, go to the scripture. Um, I think it might just be in Matthew's gospel where the father, it's where the father goes to Jesus with his son and the disciples, right? We're not able to do anything. And he's like, Jesus, like if you can do anything about this. And he's like, and Jesus says, if, and he's like, all things are possible. All things are possible for those who believe. Right. And so the father's like, I believe. And then I think there's this pause going on where Jesus gives him a look like, okay, <laughs> are you really believing? And then the father's like, help my unbelief. So if you are, if you're at the point where you're like, I don't really believe this, go to the Lord and say, Lord, you know, I'm struggling to believe you in this help my unbelief. And if you don't even want to ask him that, just say, help me with that too. You got to start at like, whatever your starting point is, go to him. He's all, he already knows that it's there already. And then you could, again, part of it could just be developing your faith and trust muscle. So it could be just picking a book of the Bible. I mean, all scripture is God breathed. All scripture is use, useful. So you could just start in the Bible and just simply asking like, Lord, what do you want me to see today? Again, the asking, there's so much in scripture that tells us to ask them. I mean, Proverbs in itself is an excellent book of the Bible for the business. So you could start there if you are literally like, I don't know which one to pick, but there's no right or wrong starting point. Um, I've also found one of my favorite references that I use is called Sparkling Gems from the Greek. It is in the format of a devotional. So there's 300 and, and there's two volumes they are massive. <clears throat> there's 365 de kind of devotional format, but it's also a reference. So what this author has done is he'll take a scripture verse and he'll break down some of the Greek words because there's so many treasures to be mined and understanding the original language. So sometimes I'm going through that, like, or picking devotionals that have you focused on scripture, but always asking the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to glean from this? Asking him, Lord, what do you want to hear me today? What do you want me to hear from you today? And he may bring you scripture verses from unrelated sources or just be looking for those connection points. Mm, I love it so much. And I have to say, you know, I wasn't always able to do this either. Mm -hmm. And it really took me growing and growing my faith, growing my belief. And I, one thing I want to emphasize, and I'll put the link to this in, as well as um, the Matthew gospel as well, those specific verses in the show notes, as well as um, the reference you just gave us, this sparkling gems from the Greek. I'm, I'm going to get that because I love that. Um, but I read a book, Don't Miss Out by Janine Janine or Jeannie, Janine Cunyon, and it's all about the Holy Spirit. And I think if you don't have an understanding of how, you know, when Jesus rose and then he was getting ready to ascend to heaven, he said, I am going to send you a helper. And when we look at the Holy Spirit as our helper and we tap into him for the, his gifts, the knowledge, the wisdom, the strength that we need um, the patience that we need to navigate our business. It, it's a game changer, like full on hands down game changer. So I'll link that book in the show notes as well, because if you are struggling or not even necessarily struggling, but maybe not confident in what you're hearing or discerning um, or able to discern, I'll 
it's a great resource for you. All right. So Andrea, we are at time, but let me just ask you this. So you had a background of being agnostic towards atheism. How has your life, your business changed because of your faith? Oh my gosh. I have no idea what kind of person I would be without the Lord. Um, specifically in business, I know the level of results that I can get for people would be different. They wouldn't be as deep because it's not me doing it. I often feel when I go into a coaching session with someone, whether it's private or group, honestly, it's such a privilege because I'm getting a front seat to the work that God is doing. Like I, before I start in a session or before we get into it, I just, I'm already thanking God for what he has. He already knows what we need. And time and again, I've seen how faithful he is to bring a word or through just the conversation, just the clarity and the peace that comes from that. There is no way I would be getting those results because it's him. It's the work of the Holy yeah. Spirit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I love that so much. And what is your favorite scripture verse? What's one that you go to? Oh gosh, I have too many, but I would say my life verse and I always, considering it's my life verse, I always forget the address, but it's the one thing I ask of the Lord. This is what I seek, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord all my days in, of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. I mean, really, it's just my heart. Like I want, yeah, I want to always be in the Lord's presence. I love that. All right. Andrea, how can the listeners connect with you, learn more from you, or even work with you to detox their business? Yeah, the best place to go would probably just be my website because it kind of has the link to all the things. Um, and that is andrealeeco.com. Lee is L-E-I-G-H. It's perfect. I will put that in the show notes as well. All right, listeners, thank you so much for being here today. I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. I I feel like um, I was panicked a little bit at the beginning because I'm like, oh my gosh, tech issues and this never happens. but I think we dropped some pretty powerful content today. So if you enjoyed it, please leave us a rating and review because that's how we get more incredible guests like Andrea on this show. And also, if you know anyone who is struggling in the least bit, life or business, share this episode with them because I feel that, well, actually, I truly believe that everything that was spoken today has so much depth and power to it to help someone else transform their lives. All right. With that, we're going to close out, but I will see you all next week.